Sports. We are Black Bar. We are Wisconsin. Back in Los Angeles, the final day of the road trip. It's the Brewers and the Dodgers. Game three of this three-game series from beautiful Dodgers Stadium. We welcome you on a Sunday afternoon, and the Brewers going after the clean sweep. Hi, everyone. Alongside Craig Council, I'm Brian Anderson. Bill Schroeder will be back on Tuesday. Craig, thanks a lot. You've done a great job filling in for us, and you haven't lost a game. 2-0. Oh. Well done. Let's make it 3-0. and oh. See if we can make it 3-0. and oh. And it is a big game today for the Brewers. They'll send up Willie Peralta looking for his 15th win against Dan Heron at an opportunity here that you might not have thought would be there when you're facing Grinky and Kershaw. Well, you're exactly right. And I think the message from Ron Renneke today is finish the job. <laughs> it's a big series, and it's got a chance to be a statement series for the Brewers. Taking three from the Dodgers. A team that's ahead of them in the standings. It's time for the Brewers to start looking ahead of them, ahead of them to the teams above them and getting that, you know, having that best record in the National League. So it's a big game, a little bit of a trap game. You beat Kershaw and Greinke. Got a day off tomorrow, so big game for Ron. Is Ron to, to the players and the messages keep them focused. Well, you see the Brewers with a win today. They will take over as the best record in the National League if they beat the Dodgers this afternoon. The wild card race right now. This is going to go back and forth for the next five and a half, six weeks. St. Louis and San Francisco are in there, but the Brewers have been able to pick up a game since this road trip began. They've got a chance to make it a five and two trip through Chicago and L.A. and maybe a chance to go up four games in the division. Willie Peralta on the mound. He's basically been the Brewers ace. He's going after number 15. Sophia will break it down when we come back from Dodger Stadium.
Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. Buy Miller Lite, now in the original can. It's Miller time. Buy Toyota, let's go places. And by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Fans filing into Dodger Stadium on this gorgeous Sunday afternoon here in Los Angeles. The Brewers have already won four out of five against the Dodgers tonight. The finale for the matchup will be Willie Peralta, 14 and seven against Dan Heron. And Willie Peralta has had two five-game winning streaks this season. And if he wins today, he will tie as the league leader in wins with Johnny Cueto. Now, Ron Renicky said that Willie Peralta has already surpassed his win total from a year ago. He's exceeded expectations, and he attributes that to a more consistent mental approach. I see more mature guy, more confident guy, a uh, guy that when he gets into trouble is able to figure some things out to get out of it. Uh, that's not to say that'll always happen, but uh, but more consistent um, mental approach to what he's doing, and uh, and then and then you see it how he pitches and gets through games. The Brewers have already knocked off Zach Greinke and Clayton Kershaw, and today they are in the position to hand the Dodgers their first sweep of the season. First pitch coming up next on Fox Sports Wisconsin. And it is time for Brewers baseball at Dodger Stadium today, and it's a warm one, 88 degrees here in Southern California as we get set for this afternoon affair and the Dodgers and the Brewers. They're in a hunt with the Washington Nationals right now as the best record in the National League. The Brewers, if they beat the Dodgers and a Washington loss, Milwaukee will join the Dodgers as a 70-win ball club, and they could walk out of here with the best record in the National League. Ron Renicki said he wants to look ahead, not back. We don't blame him. Brewers are going after the sweep. Here's the lineup Renicki will have to try to do that. It's brought to you by Associated Bank. Scooter Jeanette back in the lineup. He's had a great road trip. Had some key hits and RBIs. He has six hits on the trip. 
And five runs batted in. Dan Heron is ready to go, and his first pitch is down and away. And away we go from Dodger Stadium. Brian Anderson with Craig Council, Sophia Menard. Glad you could be with us today. And a cut and a miss by Gomez. Well, counts what he have on Dan Heron. Starting to pitch better as of late for the Dodgers. It looked like Heron was in danger of being taken out of the Dodger rotation. And since then, he's put up a couple good starts and two quality starts, two wins in his last two starts, going six and seven in the third innings in each of them. So he's pitched pitch better. It is interesting. The Dodgers have been uh, on the waiver wire making a couple of deals for starting pitchers. They picked up Roberto Hernandez, who we saw in Milwaukee last week. He's made two starts for him and pitched well. They also picked up Kevin Correa, who pitched well for the Dodgers in Atlanta. So Heron is on thin ice in the rotation, but does get the ball today, and he opens up with a walk against Carlos Gomez. So maybe the Brewers will be taking a patient approach at the plate today. The Dodgers defensively have Crawford, Puig, and Kemp in the outfield. Darwin Barney, former Gold Glove second baseman with the Cubs, he gets the start at short today. With Turner over in third, you got Gordon and Gonzalez on the right side. Drew Butera gets a call behind the plate. Day game after the night game. And there is Darwin Barney. Traded from the Cubs to the Dodgers and went to the minor leagues to play some shortstop. He played shortstop in college. And with Hanley Ramirez on the disabled list. Juan Rebe on the DL, the third baseman. It looked like Rojas got a little banged up last night as well. It is Barney who gets the call at short today. Jonathan Lucroy with Gomez at first, and we'll see if Carlos is on the move. We were talking about the approach of the Brewers in our Brewers Live pregame show today, and the Counts made a good point about Milwaukee totally changing their approach on Friday night against Zach Grinke, and then back to the more conventional, aggressive approach last night against Clayton Kershaw. So what do you figure it'll be tonight and how much of what the pitcher does has to do with that? Well, the pitcher has a lot to do with it. What what kind of stuff he has, how you feel as a hitter, you match up against that stuff. But Dan Heron is a, is a veteran, been around forever, 10 straight years of 10 plus wins, really knows what he's doing. His stuff has probably gone a little bit backwards. He's going to pitch around the edges of the plate, still throws a lot of strikes. So I think it's this is a spot where our hitters can afford to be a little more patient and get that pitch they can drive and look to do damage with. Well, Heron with an opening walk. Gomez at first. Staying put for now. Heron does have a quick move, and Lucroy sends that one deep to left field. That is way back. And there she goes. Jonathan Lucroy starts this one with a bang for the Brew Crew. Home run number 13 for Lucroy. And a quick two on the board before an out is recorded. Well, like you said, get a pitch you can do damage with. Lucroy gets a kind of a slider that just backs up a little into the middle of the plate, and he hits that ball a ton of no doubter. And Carl Crawford, the Dodger left fielder, he didn't even bother. He just turned and watched way up there into the pavilion for Luke Croy. And that is a big hit early. The Brewers, as you mentioned in our open, that this is an interesting clubhouse dynamic today. I mean, in Major League Baseball, there's an old phrase called Gravy Day that you're very familiar with. But Gravy Day, after you've won the first two games, you got a chance to sweep. And sometimes you can step off the gas a little bit, but... That's not what you sensed walking through the clubhouse today. Well, no, I think they've made it. It's been made a point that today's a big day. It's it's a chance, and it's a big day because this is a potential playoff opponent. And you come into Dodger Stadium and you sweep a team like this, they're going to remember that in October. There's no question about it. So I think Ron Ranicki's message is finish the job today. Finish the job. Braun takes one down low in the dirt. And it's a ball and two strikes. Now Renneke, you know, we had touched on his his record as a Brewer manager, even uh, in non-contending seasons after August 1st. It is very good 
Only the Detroit Tigers have a better record from August 1st to the end of the year in the Renneke era in all of baseball. And that's saying a lot. The Tigers have been in a pennant race. They've been in World Series. The Brewers have been to the postseason once with Renneke. As Braun strikes out, Butera's got to secure it at first. He does so. And that is the first out of the game for Dan Heron. And I think what you're talking about, Counts, is exactly what Renneke has been able to do with this organization in his four years here. We'll see how he does this season. But only the Tigers with more wins. The Brewers have the most wins or best winning percentage in the National League from August 1st on. I think it probably says more about Renneke and his skills as a leader and as a manager that the Brewers have been able to do that when they haven't been in contention. Well, and I think that's what that's what makes it so important is that it's been done, you know, two of the years really not in contention in, in 2012 kind of fighting back at the end there. But it's a great credit to him that his teams finished the season and uh, in, in, a, in a season where, you know, you're in it all the more reason to. But it's his style. It's that aggressive style that causes that, I think. Aramis Ramirez, a big swing and a miss and a breaking ball. It's one and two. Ramirez comes in batting 301. He's had a nice road trip. Seven hits, 19 at bats, and a couple of doubles, including one last night against Clayton Kershaw. Two on the board before most folks even get to their seats here at Dodger Stadium. They probably sold 50,000 tickets today, but. They're not going to draw near that. It is a very hot afternoon in the sun here at Dodger Stadium. As Ramirez strikes out, two gone in the inning. Back-to-back -back K's for Dan Heron. The Brewers have had a lot of success against Los Angeles and against the National League West this season. As Scooter Jeanette digs in with two away. The Brewers are 18 and 7 against the National League West this year. And they've got a chance today to win five out of six from the Dodgers. Brewers are looking to sweep the Dodgers for only the second time ever. They swept them a couple of years ago in a four game series here at Dodger Stadium. That was a Don Mattingly ball club in 2012. Jeanette back in the lineup. Weeks got the start yesterday against Kershaw. And Scooter pulls one foul. One ball, two strikes. And a platoon, Craig, that continues to be very successful. And it's not an easy thing to have a platoon carry on for this duration. We're already in the mid to late August here and that week's Jeanette combo has been a very good one. Well I, I think it's worked out great for the Brewers. Both players have been productive. As Jeanette swings and misses so Heron strikes out three but not before Jonathan Lucroy sends one out of here. What a start today at Dodger Stadium. Lucroy goes deep. His 13th homer of the year and it's two to nothing Brew Crew after a half inning.
Hey, Cash is one in early. A home run makes it two to nothing. How about after his home run counts? What do you? You're gonna have to decipher in the dugout speak. What just happened here? Look at Mark Reynolds. Get him the gear. No congratulations. Put your gear on and start catching. That's great. Who cares what you I do love with it. the play? Having fun in the dugout after a home run. I love it. Go put the gear on. The tools of brilliance. All right, here we go to the bottom of the first inning. Here's the lineup today turned in by Don Mattingly. It's brought to you by Associated Bank. Dodgers have Gordon Puig and Gonzalez at the top. Kemp Crawford, Turner in the middle. Turner gets to start at third base. Darwin Barney's first start of the series. And then Drew Butera does the catching. Dan Heron on the mound. The Brewer killer, Adrian Gonzalez, who has nine hits. Those two home runs came at Miller Park. Willie Peralta on the mound today for the Brewers, going after win number 15, as Sophia mentioned. A win today. Peralta would join Johnny Cueto at the top of the National League wins leaderboard. Cueto won two days ago against Colorado and staked to a 2 nothing lead early. Well, Willie's been so consistent all year, and he's clearly taken the next step in his development. And he strikes out Gordon on three pitches. Luke Croy secures it at first. And Gordon, who has wreaked some havoc in this series, especially in game one, is out. I will see the Brewers defense here. You got Chris Davis, Carlos Gomez, Ryan Braun. You got Ramirez and Reynolds on the corners with Segura and Jeanette back as the Keystone combo today. Yesterday, it was Herrera and Weeks. And Lucroy behind the plate. I think the fact that the Brewers have tomorrow off, and this is the show lineup for Milwaukee, gives you an idea of the importance of this game for Ron Renneke. The Brewers enter in a good stretch of the schedule. We're a couple off day on Monday and an off day on Thursday. Yasiel Puig into center field. That's playable for Gomez. And out number two. So there's plenty of chances to get a little rest here. Off day tomorrow and Thursday. And Two game series at home with Toronto mixed in between there. And so that regular lineup traditionally on a day game on Sunday, you might see some of the extra players, but uh, with the off days, it allows Renneke to put that regular lineup out there. Here's Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez with two outs. Has a couple of hits in this series after going seven for ten. In the series in Milwaukee. He's been bothered by a sore back. He's remained in the lineup, but the Dodgers are dealing with some injuries right now. They're in a stretch of uh, 20 in a row. The Dodgers playing their 20th consecutive game in 20 days. And it's starting to show up with some of their veteran players. Dodgers, like the Brewers, have tomorrow off. And then they will remain home. This is uh, the beginning of a nine game homestand for Los Angeles. They've got the Padres and the Mets coming here after a day off tomorrow. A lot of rebates on the DL with a hamstring injury. Hanley Ramirez is out with an oblique injury. Well, oh, Willie's got it dialed up early today. 97 with the fastball. And quickly one and two on Gonzalez. Willie with the, just the, he has the ability to just throw fastballs by people when you're throwing that hard looking for fastball and still being able to throw it missed with a slider pretty much a two pitch pitcher but Peralta does throw his change up more than Jimmy Nelson you know Nelson's just come up not quite comfortable yet but those are two pretty good pitches for Willie Peralta and a blistering fastball that has great sink to it. And that sharp slider. Two and two to Gonzalez. He fouls it away. He was late. 98 on that one. And I think for both Willie and Jimmy, if you want to take that next step and become Clayton Kershaw, the changeup might be the pitch that's going to have to develop for him and become a, a weapon for him. But they're pretty good right now. Yeah. Uh, and I think that just shows you how, um, you know, that's the next level. 
the Kershaws or takes you to the next level, but what Willie's doing now is pretty darn good. Yeah, I don't think uh, the Brewers get into the semantics of who's the ace, but from up here, Peralta's been that guy this year. I mean, he's been the dominant force for the Brewers. He's sitting there with 14 wins. His earned run average is a 3-4-6. Gallardo was great last night, and he's starting to uh, look like his ace form of years past. His ERA dropped to 3-3-2 after he went eight innings and just one run last night. But Peralta has the power stuff. And a fastball miss, not by much. So Gonzalez draws the walk. Willie wanted that call. It was close. But it is a two-out walk, and that'll bring up Matt Kemp. I think it's really turned out the way Doug Melvin kind of drew it up. He's got four starters, really, when you include when Garz was in there, that are really very similar, and they've all produced at a very similar level with Willie, Loesch, Gallardo, and Garza. And it's... It's hard to tell who the ace is. You don't know who the ace. Everybody goes through the stretch where they kind of feel like the ace. And that was the, the depth. You know, maybe we don't, maybe it's not considered a one, two starter, but when you're facing three, four, five, you know, the Brewers have the advantage. Now, Matt Kemp takes strike one from Peralta. I think a lot of uh, folks in the media trying to get uh, Renneke maybe to commit as, as the Brewers continue to lead the division, you start thinking about, all right, who would be your game one starter in the postseason? And I could tell you the Brewers manager's not going there. <laughs> but it's fun for us to talk about, and I well, think I you make a good point. Whoever's probably the hottest at the end of that stretch, as you go into the postseason, if you make it, that's probably who's going who's gonna to be your number one. Yeah, the great thing is I don't think there's a wrong choice. And uh, that, that's... That's just the way it is. It's they're they're very similar. They perform very similar. They've all been good, and I don't think there's a bad choice. A swing and a miss, and Kemp is down on strikes. Peralta with a scoreless first, a couple of K's. He looks sharp in that first inning. Two nothing crew. We're heading to the second. Homer by Jonathan Lucroy in the first inning and Craig take us through the hitting approach these last two nights Well, it's, it's been outstanding. I think Friday night you saw the patient approach got Greinke out after five innings last night against the ace Kershaw Very aggressive a lot of first pitch Carlos Gomez two first pitch extra base hits And it's it's been exactly how you have to do it You, you got different pitchers and you have to take different approaches and I think this Brewer offense is good enough to do that and Chris Davis right on cue this is to be more like the yesterday hitting approach as Davis swings out of his jersey almost on the first offering from Dan Heron. <laughs> he's been watching Gomez, I think. It's a, That's uh, as close to Carlos Gomez as we've seen Chris Davis get. 
I was uh, having a chat today with the great Vin Scully, and that's always fun in its own right, but uh, <laughs> Vin was uh, talking about the Brewers. He goes, I really like your team. They're fun to watch. They really get after it at the plate. They do. It's a very entertaining ball club offensively. Can be frustrating um, to see what they do, not just at the plate but on the bases. But even Mr. Scully, and he's seen just a little bit of baseball in his time. Very complimentary of the Brewers. He is a big fan of Ron Renneke. Knows him from his Dodger days very well. Always great fun to come here to Los Angeles in the Vin Scully press box. He'll be returning for his 66th year next year. And not just Vin Scully, but Jaime Harin, the Spanish voice of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's also in the Hall of Fame. Davis in the center field. We got a late jump. That ball's going to drop. Well, Davis had a big swing. It had a decent sound, but there was really nothing on it, and it fooled Puig. And he dumps it into center field for a base hit. Yeah, this is the big swing that's but off the end of the bat, and Puig really just that little hesitation, and he can't get there. So Mark Reynolds now with Davis at first. These are the top two home run hitters on the ball club. Davis and Reynolds typically hitting sixth and seventh in the Brewers lineup each day. Davis has 20. Reynolds leads the club with 21. Now Reynolds fouls it back. Mark Reynolds not necessarily in a strict platoon. He and Overbay kind of switch off, but lately it seems after the All-Star break, Reynolds has gotten hot. He's the Powerball home run leader right now with 21. He's basically the first baseman. And Overbay's been so great off the bench that Renneke's kind of settled on this lineup here with, with Reynolds as the everyday first baseman. Overbay as one of his top pinch hitters. He and Gerardo Parra on a, on a given night. Overbay had a huge pinch hit double, a three RBI double on Friday night that broke a 2 2 tie. That was part of a five run eighth inning. Is that a fair assessment of where we are with the Brewers? I think it is. And I, th I think Ron really likes the weapons he has off the bench late in the game now. He has Ricky Weeks for left handed uh, pitching, and he has Para and Overbay for right handed pitching. It gives him some choices. And it, he really feels like I think he gets the matchup he wants in, in a crucial late inning at bat. Now Reynolds knows Heron well. He played third base for the Diamondbacks when Heron was an all-star pitcher in Arizona. And these two go back a ways. Heron started his career with Oakland, became a star with the Diamondbacks. Was sent here to Los Angeles in the 2010 season, Dan Heron. Has not gained that form that he had with the Diamondbacks. That was a big trade that the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers made. That was a trade deadline deal, 2010. Reynolds pulls one foul just foul. Not by much this was close but a good call. The equalizer for Dan Heron has always been the, the split fingered fastball which just has that tumbling action. Big swing and miss pitch. Now Reynolds takes a ball high. Now Heron came up with the Cardinals. Made a name for himself with Oakland, probably better stated. Three-time All-Star. Was with the Nationals last year. And that was a little jam shot out to Puig. 
So Reynolds is retired. First out of the second inning. Davis still at first. And here comes Gene Segura back in the starting lineup here tonight. He had to leave the game on Friday. He was sliding into second base trying to break up a double play. The thrown ball by the shortstop Rojas actually hit Segura in his right hand, his throwing hand. He had to come out of the game. Didn't start yesterday, although Renicki said he could be available. Turns out the Brewers didn't need him. And Segura's back in there today. Scooter Jeanette didn't start yesterday either with Kershaw on the mound, the lefty. So you have a new double play combo today, Segura and Jeanette. But yesterday, Ricky Weeks and Elian Herrera played well. Well, they're still buzzing about that ball game last night. Brewers did not take batting practice today. A lot of time in the clubhouse. And Clayton Kershaw pitched a good game. He went the distance yesterday. He struck out 11. He didn't walk anybody. And yet he was saddled with the loss in a 3-2 Milwaukee win. Segura slow roller to Gordon. And it's dropped. Gonzalez dropped the ball. Segura was flying down the line. I think he surprised Gordon a little bit. And a bad throw, and it keeps the inning alive here. With just one out, now two men are on. This is why you hustle. I think D. Gordon kind of took Segura's speed for granted, and Adrian Gonzalez was a little surprised too, and not ready for a throw that was a little off the mark. And that's a, that's a play that I think Adrian Gonzalez has got to make. Such an awkward throw there. You know, close range. Gordon's coming a long way. Looked like he was a little indecisive on how hard to throw it. He didn't want to handcuff his first baseman, but that's a big break. We'll see if the Brewers can cash it in. Peralta bunts it in the air, and it's caught by Turner. So Willie trying to advance the runners. A little pop up to Turner at third base for the second out. Well, trying to stay at a double play and. Popped up bunt. That just takes another runner out of scoring position. So still first and second. Justin Turner getting the start at third again today for the uh, injured Uribe. Here's Gomez now back to the top of the order. Carlos walked in the first. Aaron starting him with another breaking ball. 40 pitches already for Dan Heron. I think Clayton Kershaw was in the fifth inning at 40 pitches last night. Two outs. And Gomez fouls it off his foot. You can hear him yell. Dan Heron's the kind of pitcher that's going to nibble around the edges. He obviously doesn't have the kind of stuff that Clayton Kershaw does. And this hurts. Mm. Yeah, right off the arch of his foot. Yikes. We always put that shin guard there and then we never hit never it. Never hit it. You wore one. Just foul him off your toes. Don't they make uh, they make the guards that have the, the extra extension for the toes, right? Yeah, they they, they make them, but you feel like you, you cover one spot, then you hit the other spot, and you gotta <laughs> cover the whole leg almost. And you hit one off your knee. Well, they've got Gomez shaded a little bit in the hole on the left side. The Dodgers play a pretty straight up defensive uh, positioning. Not too many dramatic shifts. Certainly not as dramatic as some of the shifts that the Brewers employ. And Gomez draws the walk again. So the uber patient Carlos Gomez. You have to go to the record books here and see uh, about his season. I don't remember many games, if any, where he's walked twice in a game. And he's aboard to load the bases. Gomez has seen 10 pitches today. In the entire game last night, he saw just eight. Luke Croy put the Brewers on the board in the first, a two run home run, Powerball number 13 of the season for Jonathan. And he's up there with the bases loaded. 
has some grand slam history for the Brewers. He's been a good hitter with the bases loaded this year. Includes a grand slam. Has three of them in his career. This is a spot where I think Jonathan Lucroy is so good at using the opposite field. We saw we see a lot of his doubles go to the opposite field. This is a spot two outs men in scoring position so good at using the opposite field. Lucroy sends one left center that ball is well hit and it is off the wall. Davis is in Segura scores here comes Gomez he scores. It's a three RBI double for Jonathan Lucroy. Responsible for all five runs today. Lucroy in two swings has five RBIs and it's five to nothing crew. Well, that's a pretty good start to your day. Two at bats, five RBIs, and another off speed pitch. And he drives it into the left center field gap. Wow. What a start to the day for Lucroy. Putting the Brewers on his back, or at least on his bat. And Lucroy gives the Brewers a big jolt early. Jonathan has pushed over to 58 RBIs now with the five today. And he is now at the top of the major league lead in doubles. He leads the National League. No National League catcher, by the way, has led the league in doubles ever. And Jonathan Lucroy is at the top right now. That's a, that's an incredible statistic, isn't it? To be the if, to lead the league in doubles as a catcher for the first time ever. I believe uh, the last catcher to lead the league in doubles was uh, Pudge Rodriguez with the Rangers in the late 90s. Lucroy missed a home run, a grand slam by just a few feet out there. Boy, think about that error. By the way, the error was charged to Gonzalez. And that opens the door for the Brewers to get some of their best hitters to the plate. Lucroy makes him pay. This is really that shows the strength of the Brewer lineup too. We've talked about the power throughout the lineup, but in the last two nights, we've seen home runs from first three hitters in the lineup: Gomez, Lucroy, and Braun, all taking their turns doing damage. Now Braun had the big two-run homer yesterday. You're always looking for that one at bat that helps everybody else in the lineup settle in or ease into the game, take a little pressure off offensively. Braun had that at bat yesterday with Kershaw. On the mound, Gomez had doubled. He swung at the first pitch, did Carlos. He ripped one down the left field line. And then Gomez was giving Kershaw all kind of trouble, or at least had his attention at second base yesterday. And Braun got himself into a hitter's count, got it to 3 1, then drove one into right center for a two run homer. His first home run since late July. It had been a stretch of 28 games between home runs for Braun. That was number 15 last night. Took him to 69 runs batted in. Kershaw had some very interesting comments after the game. It's another reason why players have so much respect for him. He said, you know, he pitched well. He had better stuff than he did against Milwaukee in Milwaukee, but he got outpitched by Giovanni. And that was the case. Braun grounds out. Jonathan Lucroy. Five, the Los Angeles Dodgers zero. What a day already for the Brewer catcher. Two run homer and a three run double.
five Brewers runs after clearing the bases with a double in the second. And as luck would have it, Wednesday, September 10th is halfway to St. Patrick's Day at Miller Park. The Brewers will take on the Marlins, and all fans who purchase a halfway to St. Patrick's Day ticket package will receive a Brewers green knit beanie. For details, you can visit brewers.com slash special events. Now, Willie Peralta sitting at 14 wins, and with a win today, would tie as the league leader in wins with Reds pitcher Johnny Cueto. And Ron Renicki said the difference has been just a more consistent mental approach. He's definitely more confident as a pitcher, showing more maturity. When he gets into trouble, he's been able to get out of it, get through the games, and uh, that's been the difference that he certainly didn't expect Peralta to be in this position and said he thinks he's still got more upside left for the rest of the season. Well, Peralta is big and strong, and that's what's so impressive about him as he deals strike one to Carl Crawford to start this second inning. You know, he, he'll start at 97-98, and he can get into the late innings at 97 98 miles per hour. He's trying to break free from that group at 14 wins. Some pretty big names on that list. And Peralta making a name for himself this year in a big way. And a pitcher that is maturing right before our eyes and the mental part of the game now starting to match up with the physical part. As Crawford slices one left field line. Well positioned Chris Davis. And one away here in the second. And I think Ron Renneke, you know, hit on a point that I like is that it's really is an emotional guy. He's an emotional guy when he pitches. You can you can see it when we watch the games. He's he gets a little frustrated at times, and that's not. It's easy to say stop getting frustrated, Willie. Stop getting frustrated. But <laughs> he's just he's got to experience it. He's got to learn how to control his own emotions, and he's done a better job of that. And it has been more focused when he gets in trouble. Being able to be focused and, and get out of trouble. Here's Justin Turner. First pitch is up and in. It's kind of like parenting, right? If you have kids, you know exactly what we're talking about. You got to know when to push a little. Sometimes you got to know when to back off and let a player uh, figure it out for himself. Turner, little jam shot. Braun got a late break. Long run. Can't get there. The first hit for the Dodgers. Is a little flare by Justin Turner. The Brewers typically play deep in their outfield. Braun is usually the deepest. And that one falls for a hit. Willie beats Turner here with a fastball, but one of those times where you hit it in the right spot. So Turner. Who has been one of Mattingly's best pinch hitters forced into the starting lineup the last couple of days that uh, weakens the Dodger bench. Here's Darwin Barney, one away. Barney is a Dodger. Began the year with the Cubs, traded from Chicago to Los Angeles. He had lost his way with the Cubs. They had all these great prospects coming, including Javier Baez. And uh, we have seen. The emergence of Baez that uh, essentially made Barney expendable. They knew they were going to be making that move at some point. So Barney, who won a gold glove with the Cubs as a second baseman, has found a home here in Los Angeles. His offensive game has never really matched his defensive game. Cubs were always very hopeful that he would be able to hit. Thought he might. Remember, just a couple of years ago, he was hitting at the top of the order in the dirt. Runner goes and Turner's going to make it. It's good base running by Justin Turner. He took off as soon as it hit the dirt. That'll be a wild pitch. Well, this is what aggressive base running just that ball sneaks away from the catcher just a little bit. And really, as a base runner, you're just looking for any time that catcher goes to his knees and the aggressive teams are taken off right away. Because generally that ball is going to sneak away from the catcher, and the catcher can't get up, go retrieve the ball, and throw to second and beat you. Good aggressive base running. Puts a runner in scoring position. Five to nothing, Brewers. Lucroy's driven in all five today. And Peralta trying to keep the Dodgers down. Those all important shutdown innings. Don't want to give an opposition life at the plate, especially on a day like this. Both teams with days off tomorrow. You can talk about the Brewers being in a trap game with a day off tomorrow. Dodgers are in the same boat. Yeah, and you mentioned 20 days in a row the Dodgers have been going at it. So 
it is the same boat. You, players tend to look to those off days, especially when they've been going hard and you're banged up a little bit. It's easy to to uh, you know look ahead a little bit and get a little complacent, and that's uh, the coaching staff and both dugouts' job is to keep them keep them on task. Three and two, the count on Barney. Does have a couple of home runs this year, 17 RBIs. Most of that coming with the Cubs. And Barney takes low, so Peralta walks Barney. His second walk issue. And two on for Drew Butera, the Dodger backup catcher. That's number 31, Drew Butera. LaCroix with a visit to the mound. Well, it's now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag WISFANPHOTO for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast. It's all brought to you by AT&T. Drew Butera, two on, one out. Peralta does get a lot of ground balls. That's his specialty. Another reason Renicky likes to put a his premium infield defenders out there. Well, that tied up Butera. Down and in sinker at 97 miles an hour. There just aren't many in the game that have that weapon. No, that's just a pitch where a guy coming off his bench and playing once a week, and he sees that as the first pitch he's all day. And back in there he goes, and it's quickly 0-2. And this is an example of that inning kind of Ron Renneke is talking about. You get a little bloop single. You walk a hitter, Darwin Barney, that Willie's had pretty good success against in the past. And he's in a jam all of a sudden. Jonathan Lucroy goes out to the mound, tries to settle him down, and says, as a ground ball pitcher, you're one pitch away from being out of this inning. And you got the pitcher coming up next, Dan Heron. In the dirt. What a block by Lucroy. Man, that was something. That ball was not even close, and Lucroy able to keep it in front to keep the double play opportunity alive. I think this ball jumps up, and yeah, that, that was an excellent block, a difficult block. That was one for Bill Schroeder right there. That's the kind of thing that gets Rock pretty fired up. I noticed you were appreciative, but not so enthusiastic it's as Bill Schroeder would have been. You know, I, th I think unless you've done that and taken balls off your chest like crazy, <laughs> it make he make these guys make it look so easy, don't they? Weren't you the emergency catcher at some point, at, at one point in your career? I remember you used to catch. I, ca I uh, like I like to catch between innings. Right, I remember that. That was fun. That didn't put you in the emergency catcher role. That I made me so nervous. I was scared to death. But you never wear a mask or anything. No, you always wear a mask. Or no, no equipment. No equipment. No equipment. You just no equipment. Walked out there with a. I was scared to death when when the closer would come out there because the closer John Axford would be all fired up, you know. Right. A swing and a miss. Peralta strikes out Butera. Made him look bad. He'd be throwing gas. He'd be throwing 95 on his first pitch. It's all frothed up. I was. Uh, that was not good. Then I'd be looking over to the dugout. When you coming out, Luke? When you coming out, Luke? <laughs> well, that's when you let a few go by. And yeah, buy a, yeah. Run time. back to the run back and get them. Yeah. I mean, there's only so much protection a mask and a protective cup can offer, right? No, it was. Yeah, I felt every time. I was <laughs> so thankful. I was the happiest man on earth when I was walking back to the dugout. I made it. <laughs> I survived. I remember vividly you doing that. All right, here's Heron. Very good hitting pitcher. And he swings and fouls it away. Heron has an idea at the plate always. Yeah, you gotta pay attention to. He is a career 208 hitter, Dan Heron. Hitting 150 this year. There was a couple of years when he hit over 300 at the major league level. As a matter of fact, there was a year in 2010, Heron hit 364. One season. Had a home run, had six doubles. That was uh, that year split time between Arizona and, and the Angels. Peralta trying to 
take care of the opposing pitcher and get to the dugout. Put up another zero after the Brewers scored three in the top of this inning. Another block by Luke Croy. Peralta fighting that slider a little bit. Luke Croy knows it's always a tough day when Peralta's on the mound. He loves catching Peralta just because of the sheer stuff that he has, but he knows he's going to be in the dirt a lot. Two and two. Heron lashes one foul. It becomes an, an easy day from the perspective, maybe mentally, of what fingers to put down. You know, it's, it's largely a fastball slider combination from Willie. And a guy like Kyle Lowe, there's four pitches and a lot more choices. But as far as the stuff and blocking balls, it's, it's going to be a tougher day, no question. Two on, two out. Peralta delivers, and Heron gets jammed and fouls it off. And I think Rock would tell you, for, for ca most catchers, the hard sinker is the most difficult pitch to catch. That's the one that beats up your hands. And almost impossible to block, right, when, with this yeah. kind of velocity? Because most of these guys are so good, they, they know where they're going to catch the ball in the glove. And that sinker sometimes is moving, so they don't catch it in the right spot all the time. Well, Heron has worked to count full now. This becomes a key hitter early for Peralta. The Brewers do have... A nice lead early in this game. The Dodgers a very good offense though. And you don't want to turn the lineup over here with Gordon coming up. Especially to load the bases. Heron can do damage himself. Three and two, two outs. Runners go. Heron fouls it away. 99 with that fastball by Peralta. That's one of his best fastballs of the year. But he can't shake Dan Heron. Just spoiling a pitch like that is considered a success. Sometimes it's not getting a hit, it's spoiling a pitcher's good pitch that's a success. Runners go, bouncing ball to Segura. Nice easy hop. And that will retire the side. He made Willie work a little bit. The Dodgers get a hit and a walk, but Willie strands two to score this on the board. As we head to the top of the third inning, Brewers are coming up. Willie Peralta's got the big fastball going early here today. And the Brewers trying to take down Dan Heron. How about the pitchers they have beaten this season? And that includes Grinky and Kershaw from the Dodgers. They have beaten Samarja twice. They've beaten Strasburg twice. Beat Lester, David Price, Adam Wainwright. This is incredible that the Brewers have been able to raise their offensive game to take down some of the best pitchers in the game. Well, that, that's a really remarkable graphic. I mean, that's the best pitchers in the game. And I think it 
it's encouraging and I, I know I've talked to Jerry Naren about this is that this this offense has shown that it, it can beat the best pitching in the game and sometimes we all get frustrated some days because not every day is going to be a good day but this offense has shown that in the if it makes it to the playoffs that it can beat the best in the game and that's a great sign. So here we go to the third inning. Jonathan Lucroy responsible for all five runs thus far a two run homer and a three run double. That three run double coming with two outs and that followed a Dodger error all those runs unearned in that second inning. Heron back to work first pitch is strike one to Aramis Ramirez. Ramirez Jeanette. And Chris Davis. Now, since 2012, the Dodgers have been swept in a three game series, a three or four game series, only five times. The Brewers have one of those. We talked about that four game series sweep back in 2012. It just doesn't happen that often. Arizona's done it twice, the Padres, the Giants. These are divisional teams with a lot more opportunities against the Dodgers. And now the Brewers, a chance with a win today to make it. Two sweeps in the last three years here at Dodger Stadium. Ramirez in the right center, long run for Puig, and he'll fetch it in the alley for the out. Ramirez hit it hard. Got one away in the third. Carsoup.com trivia question today. Which five teams did Craig Council play for in his 16 year career? You were kind of complaining a little bit about the difficulty of the trivia questions. So I think the truck felt like they needed to have one that you could answer. A softball. Just to build your confidence a little bit. I'm going to be one for three. Do you know all the five teams you played for in the right order? It's hazy. How it many was a hazy 16 years? How many teams did you play for in the minor leagues? Because I know the answer to that. You were with, and I, I'm talking about your minor league rehab too. So right, right. Minor right. league cities or teams you played for. I put the uniform on for different. Yeah. I feel like it I was don't know the answer to that one. Two different organizations. I, you know, the Rockies. You came up with the Rockies, so you coming through that ladder. That'll be easy for you, and then maybe. And then the and then the Diamondbacks, Diamondbacks couple rehab stints. Yeah, what were your injuries? That's a long list, but I remember playing for the two uh, Tucson Tucson Torals. I think we were yeah, maybe back then No longer affiliated and the let uh, I believe the Lancaster Jethawks. Oh a nice one Big hitters park there, right? Yeah Lancaster had a good big night there California Lee. Oh, <laughs> you did Did you buy the spread? Yeah, of course that away what that set you back in the in the California League, a couple hunch. Pizzas for everyone. Pizzas for everyone, right? <laughs> Scooter Jeanette singles up the middle, and a one-out base hit. Jeanette keeps hitting. He's had a great road trip. A man on for Chris Davis. Scooter just keeps on hitting. Feels like Scooter's one of those guys with a swing that. Doesn't go in, in extended slumps. At least that's the way it's been early in his big league career. He's had a couple of key hits on this road trip. Talk about those ice breaking hits as Davis fouls one away. Some of those uh, relax the offense kind of base hits. In Chicago, Jeanette had a, a two RBI double in the first inning. To set the standard for the Brewers. Brewers won the opener of this road trip in Chicago, lost back to back games to Hendricks and Wada. A couple of pitchers they had not seen this season. And then they won the finale Thursday afternoon at Wrigley Field. And then you face Greenkey and Kershaw coming here on a 2 2 road trip so far, and the Brewers have won the first two games. I think that says a lot. Just for look where Scooter Jeanette's hitting in the lineup now. He's he's hitting fifth in the lineup, and I think it says a lot about how Ron Renicky feels about 
the production he's going to provide. And I think a little bit is to is to break up the right handed hitters. But Renicky feels comfortable putting Jeanette in a pretty crucial spot in the lineup. Big swing by Davis. Uh, Jeanette has responded well. He now has seven hits on this road trip. Been dealing with that quad injury. Knocked him out for five consecutive games a couple of weeks ago. We put up that graphic a moment ago with all of the uh, the aces or the top line pitchers as Davis sends out into the gap in right center. That's going to go off the wall. Jeanette around third and he's going to hold up there. Brewers are very cautious with Jeanette running, especially in a five nothing lead. So they hold him up. And it's second and third on a double by Chris Davis. Well, Chris Davis in a similar swing to Friday night. Going to the opposite field in the right center field gap. And I think we saw again the Brewers really being cautious with Scooter Jeanette. A little bobble by Puig out there in right center field, but Eddie Cedar not wanting to extend Scooter Jeanette. Double number 31 for Chris Davis to go along with his 20 home runs. And Reynolds coming up. The Dodgers are going to put him on to load the bases. Try to give Heron a chance to get a double play and get out of this inning. By the way, that double by, by Davis moves him into the top 10 in the league in doubles. He's in a tie for 10th. What a year he's having. Jeanette and Davis. Big stories. Last year in the second half, they've carried it over and been even better this season. And I, I think these are two players that are really great credits to the, the Brewers player development system. Not <laughs> heralded prospects, not top 100 prospects, didn't make all these prospect lists that they produce. But these are two big leaguers in their first full season. Having major impacts on one of the best teams in baseball. Yeah, a great point. And then you could add Mike Fires to that group as well. Those three players, Jeanette Davis and Fires, all out of that 09 draft. And there's been a lot of criticism over that draft because it failed at the top, at least it has from some of the top picks. But, well, you take two starters basically, and now a guy who's in your rotation, you'll take that any time out of a draft class. It's almost unheard of. Bases loaded. Brewers trying to deliver a knockout punch here in the third inning. Five nothing. Segura is at the plate. Got the pitcher Peralta on deck. So this is the big at bat in this inning right now. And Segura in the left field. Back is Crawford. He's there. Hit it like a bullet right at Crawford. But Jeanette will score. And the Brewers. Score their sixth run on a sack fly at an RBI from Gene Segura, his 27th RBI of the year. A nice job by Gene getting a ball up in the air and he scorched that ball. A little bad luck right at Crawford, but did his job. Did his job. And when you got a 5 0 lead, adding runs, just adding even single runs makes a huge difference. Takes a little wind out of the sails of the opponent. Here's Peralta now, and he swings. Little flare. Gordon's back, and he's got it for the out. Side retired, but the Brewers keep the pressure on. They've scored in every inning. Two hits and a walk in the third. A run is in. It's 6 0.
Los Angeles, and he's bringing the heat today. He's got a 6 nothing lead to work with. Peralta has been as fast as 99 miles an hour today against the Dodgers. He's from the Dominican Republic. He likes it hot, and he's one of the hardest throwers in the game, Counts. Well, he is. You see here that four hardest throwers by average fastball velocity, and uh, Willie ranking fourth in the league. And it shows you not, you know, 95, only four. He's averaging 90, over 95 miles an hour on a fastball, which is really incredible. So Peralta typically gets a lot of run support, and he's getting it here today. Six on the board through the first three offensive innings for the Brewers. Peralta back out there to start his third. And the top of the order coming up. D. Gordon, Yasiel Puig, Adrian Gonzalez. Now the Cardinals just won. They hung on to beat the Padres. Padres made a great run in the ninth inning. Chasing Rosenthal. It's a three-run lead he was trying to protect. He couldn't finish the game. They had to bring Seth Manus on to close it out. So the Cardinals win 7-6. Padres uh, left two men on base in that ninth inning. But I think the ninth inning is anything but secure right now for St. Louis. Rosenthal has really struggled over the last couple of weeks. So the Brewers need a win today to remain two games up in the division. I beg your pardon, three games up in the division. Swinging bunt, Lucroy throws in time. Well, Gordon flying down the line. Lucroy got out of there quickly and made the play for the out. Lucroy's having one of those games today. Well, Lucroy's doing a little bit of everything today, swinging the bat, blocking balls, and fielding, swinging butts. Wow, that was a great play by Lucroy. Quick catcher coming out of the shoot. Retires Gordon, first out of the inning. Now the Brewers trying to maintain their three-game lead. Milwaukee looking for their fourth consecutive win. They started this road trip two games up. Anytime you can go on the road and gain ground, you're doing yourself well. The Brewers won't lose any ground regardless of what happens here today. They could pick up a game across this seven-game road trip. And they picked up a game on their last homestand. They went four and two, winning back-to-back -back series against the Giants and the Dodgers. Ball and a strike. Yasiel Puig at the plate with one away. I half expected Puig to be out of the lineup today. He looked uh, like he was bothered at the plate swinging the bat yesterday. But he's back in there. Hit a line drive out in the first inning to center. And a bouncing ball. Segura's there. Throw to first in time for the out. Nice play. Gene Segura ranging to his left. Two up, two down. Well, oh, this is always a tough play when you, when you got somebody at the plate that you know can run. And Segura ranges far to his left and throws easily on the run. Good stretch by Reynolds. Two ground ball outs for Peralta. That'll bring up Adrian Gonzalez. One of three Dodger base runners at this point. He walked in the first. Carlos Frias loosening in the Dodger bullpen. Could be the end of Dan Heron's day. I think the Dodgers have a little bit of concern right now. They've had to place a couple of players on the DL position players. Uribe and Hanley Ramirez. Hyunjin Ru went on the DL before the Brewers arrived here. And as Gonzalez just foul. Out of the reach of Davis and Ramirez. 
So they've lost the starting pitcher. Zach Grinke revealed after the game Friday that his elbow has been a little tight, which was big news. He has not expressed that. And uh, outside of his own clubhouse, nobody knew that who covers the Dodgers, those who are with him every day. So that was news. Kershaw had his 11 game winning streak snapped last night. Going to be a trying couple of weeks, you think, here for the Dodgers. There's a swing and a miss. Peralta strikes him out on a nasty slider. Three up, three down inning with a strikeout. Best inning so far for Peralta. Lucroy has been the star offensively today. He'll bat when we come back. We head to the fourth at Dodger Stadium. Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. And by Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. Sun shining brightly on a hot Sunday afternoon in Los Angeles. Chavez Ravine. Beautiful Dodger Stadium. The Brewers enjoying their time here. They've uh, enjoyed their time here the last three years, as a matter of fact. Dan Heron Craig has been chased. It is Carlos Frias out of the Dodger bullpen as Dan Heron only goes three innings against Milwaukee, gives up six runs. Well, Heron threw 74 pitches in his three innings work. Just for a reference, Clayton Kershaw had 74 pitches through seven innings of work <laughs> yesterday. So Heron was clearly laboring. Different kind of day. Heron, three innings, five hits, six runs, three earned, walked three. Had three strikeouts. So Frias will get the ball here. And he'll be trying to give the Dodgers some innings. Top of the order, Gomez, Lucroy, Braun coming up. And Gomez turns on one. Can he keep it fair? That ball's deep. And it is a home run for Carlos Gomez. Snuck it inside the foul pole. And the Brewers keep the attack on. Seven to nothing Milwaukee as Gomez hits his 20th home run of the season. Well, we're seeing the best of the Brewers offense today and there Gomez took a fastball and turned on it. Carlos had been struggling a little bit. But he has turned it on this series. I know I think Ron Renick had considered giving him a day off in this series but Carlos wanted to stay in there and hit hit his way out of it like he does and he sure has this weekend. Carlos Gomez after back to back walks his first two times up. He saw 10 pitches in his first two at bats which is uh, a big story for Gomez offensively not wasting any time and he drives one out of here. Lucroy in the right field. 
Kemp will make the catch. LeCroy retired. First time he's been retired today. By the way, I didn't get to uh, mention this about Gomez, but the two walks mm -hmm. in this game. Mm -hmm. Just the fourth time all year he's walked two or more occasions in a game. It's the first time since May 5th he's walked twice. And he said, enough with the walks. I'm just going to hit one in the seats. Here's Ryan Braun. And a bouncing ball to short. Darwin Barney for out number two. Frias comes in for Dan Heron. And the Brewers keep scoring. Runs in every inning. Two in the first, three in the second. One in the third and one so far here in the fourth. Right now the Brewers are second in the National League and home runs behind the Rockies. Hit two home runs last night. Braun and Gomez went deep against Kershaw. Ramirez right center slicing over to Kemp and the side is retired. Brewers get a lead off home run though. They keep the pressure on. It's now 7 nothing as Carlos Gomez enters into the 2020 club. His 20th home run of the season. And the Brewers are rolling in L.A. today. Today on the field, seven to nothing. The score as Gomez just goes deep in the fourth inning. But you have a defensive change here, which we will be watching and waiting for a report on. Lyle Overbay will take over at first base. That moves Mark Reynolds to third base, and Aramis Ramirez is out. So Ramirez, 0 for three, and made the last out. We saw Ron Renicky having a chat with athletic trainer Dan Wright. And he has made the change. So as soon as we get an injury update from the Brewers clubhouse, we'll pass it along. Let's hope Ramirez has something minor. Aramis had a great day yesterday, both uh, with the bat and with the glove. He had two hits yesterday off Kershaw. Very good game defensively at third base. So he's out. Matt Kemp leads off. First ball hacking is Kemp. Peralta with three scoreless on the board. He's coming off his best inning, quickest inning, a nine pitch inning in the third. And he's racked up four strikeouts through the first three innings.
Brewers trying to do something that has not happened all year against the Dodgers. Los Angeles has not been swept in a series of three or more games all season. Matter of fact, they have not lost three in a row, period, since May. And they have not lost four in a row all season either. So this is a Dodger ball club that got up to a slow start. Remember, they began their season in Australia, that two game series in Australia in, in March. There's a call, strike three. Matt Kemp rung up and barking at the home plate umpire, Mike Easterbrook, on his way out. Strikeout number five for Willie Peralta. Backwards K to start the fourth inning. Oh, Willie Peralta with a good fastball away. Matt Kemp might have had a little complaint according to Fox Tracks, but swing the bat, Matt. It's seven to nothing. Crawford swings the bat. He lines one to center field, a base hit. Crawford starting to heat up at the plate for the Dodgers. Clean single back through the box. And a base runner with one away. Crawford had two hits yesterday. And Mike Easterbrook, did he just throw somebody out? Not sure. He's barking. He is yelling at the Dodger dugout. Now Matt Kemp is still there. Matt Kemp still very passively, aggressively yelling at Mike Easterbrook. He's smiling, but he is making his point. I don't think he threw anybody out. I think he said, if I have to be here, you all have to be here too. No one's getting tossed right now. We'll see. Justin Turner will bat with one away. Remember that story that Bruce Freming was telling? It was a, a hot day. Joe Torre was managing the St. Louis Cardinals. It's one of those hot summer days at Bush Stadium on, on the AstroTurf back then. Torre came out as Crawford takes off. Luke Roy's throw in a second is late. Carl Crawford steals second. And a runner in scoring position with one away. Crawford got a good jump. Peralta not paying much attention to him in a 7 0 ball game, and Crawford swipes the bag. Dodgers lead the National League in steals. Working on the stats here. Anyway, Torrey comes out and he's yelling. He wants to get thrown out. And Bruce Fremming said, I told him it's too hot. If I got to be here, you got to be here. No one's going anywhere. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> I think that's, you know, I think umpires think that. I, and I think that's true. I think it's a 7 nothing game. So Matt Kemp might think, oh, I'm not hurting my team by getting thrown out here. Got a day off tomorrow. Start the vacation early. What was the most interesting or funny humorous conversations you ever had with an umpire that you could share anything like that in your career that that you tell in the banquet circuit well my my the, the favorite one i had was an umpire laz diaz who's still umpiring and i uh we had a dispute at the plate about how many the, the count turner takes a ball and that's ball four and i had uh fouled off a bunch of pitches and and, a, and, a, and ball four was thrown. And Laz Diaz maintained that it was ball three. <laughs> and this was before instant replay. And I right. said, Laz, that's ball four. He says, no, it's ball three. And we got into you know, a very heated argument. Right. Um, Did you get thrown out? I didn't get thrown out. But I said, I told him, I said, you will apologize to me tomorrow. <laughs> you will apologize to me tomorrow when you know that it was ball four. And I eventually ended up walking. And they asked the other umpires, the other umpire says, no, that's ball three, that's ball three. 
But it was ball four, and Laz apologized to me the next nice. day. Nice. You should have demanded that all four umpires apologize yeah. to you. Yeah. Next day, he apologized, huh? Did he? He did it in a joking way, in a yeah. fun way, yeah. Not a true apology. Really? Well, he's still you know, one you of those then. half kind of apologies. Yeah. Well, we'll have to line that up. Maybe we could, you know, next time Diaz is umpiring a Brewer series, we'll make sure we get that apology. That's important. It's important for everybody to move on. As a bouncer to Reynolds, his first chance as a third baseman in time for the out. Barney retired. 5 3. By the way, got a note from Mike Masallo, Brewers Media Relations Director. He said the Aramis Ramirez removal from the game is due to a manager decision, no injury. So that's a good news, actually. Give Ramirez a chance to. Take the rest of this day off, have tomorrow off, come back fresh on Tuesday against the Blue Jays. Two outs here's Butera. Second and third for the Dodgers. Peralta struck out Butera in the second inning. He had a few knuckle busters in that inning. And that at bat against Butera. There's another one in on his hands. Crawford had a single and a steal. Turner walks. They both move up on the ground ball. Stadium operations trying to get this crowd into it. Butera, center field. Gomez right there. And Willie Peralta keeps the shutout alive. A line drive out. Stranding two. Four shutout for Peralta. 7 nothing crew. Today here at Dodger Stadium, they lead seven to nothing as we start the fifth, and it's a rare interleague matchup between the Brewers and the Blue Jays this Tuesday and Wednesday as the clubs square off in a brief two-game series with playoff implications in both leagues. You can call 414-902-4000 or visit Brewers.com for tickets. And uh, the Brewers this series have already knocked off Zach Greinke, Clayton Kershaw ending his 11-game winning streak last night, and Ron Renegy speaking about his own rotation said, you know, we may not have that big name Cy Young Award winner in our rotation, but we have been just as good during this run. They've come up with 21 quality starts in their last 25 outings, and they came into this game seventh in the National League with a team ERA, and Ron Renneke was surprised. He said, I thought we'd actually be higher than that, but said that just shows how good the pitching has been in the National League this season. It's been a great run for the Brewers' starting rotation. Thank you, Sophia, and a, a very balanced rotation. They haven't had to deal with too many injuries, although uh, Garz is the first Starter to go on the disabled list. He's hoping to come back in early September. 
And now Kyle Loesch dealing with an ankle injury, not on the DL. His spot's going to be skipped in the series. Speaking of the Blue Jays, Fires will get to start Tuesday against Toronto. Fires against R.A. Dickey, and then Jimmy Nelson and Jay Happ for the day game on Wednesday. Just a two-gamer at Miller Park. We'll have them both for you here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Scooter Jeanette leads off for the crew. 7 0 Milwaukee. They've scored in every inning. Lucroy drove in the first five. Two run homer in the first. Three run double with two outs in the second. Segura had a sack fly in the third. And then Gomez went deep in the fourth. Brewers chase the starter, Dan Heron, after three innings. Carlos Frias out to start his second inning of work. Been a significant stretch for the starters now. Peralta hopes to add to it. But 25 games and a two and a half ERA for the starting pitchers in the stretch. And I think one of the most important stats in that group say what you want about quality starts six innings or more, three earned runs or fewer. It does tell the story of how the starting pitchers are keeping their club in the game. And the Brewers in that 25 game stretch, 21 quality starts, just 45 earned runs. I know Brewer starters as a group, the unit, feel like it's really their job to be out there for as many innings as they can. And it's a big, it's kind of a big mantra with them is innings, starting pitchers deliver innings. And that, there's a spillover effect to that. It makes your bullpen better. It makes your, the guys in your bullpen have better season. It allows to have, them to have better seasons because Ron Renneke is able to then put them in positions and match them up to positions where they'll they will be successful and the starters take pride in that and that's that doesn't show up on the stat sheet there's no stat for that but it's a it's a it's a source of pride for those guys that and it's something that does help the team I think every big league manager right they will they'll be they'll be great with needing just two innings or to try to get the last six outs from your bullpen, but you start getting into nine outs, or what we saw with the Dodgers on Friday, 12 outs. There's no telling how many more pitchers, especially when you're dealing with the sixth and the seventh. So now you're starting to deal with your 10th, 11th, 12th man in your, your pitching core. And so you start plowing through it. Even the Dodgers spoke of it last night. You know, Clayton Kershaw took the loss last night, but he went the distance. And they, they didn't need a reliever that can set you up for weeks and you want to talk about one of the key moments of this road trip for Milwaukee when Kyle Loesch has to exit the game with an ankle injury Marco Estrada came in that game in Wrigley Field and pitched four innings so he saved the bullpen even though the Brewers lost that game Renneke was able to get to the finish line with just Estrada and Brandon Kinsler. And so that set him up for the rest of the road trip with his relievers. Jeanette gets jammed and a ground ball out to Gordon for out number one. Frias has retired four in a row since the home run he allowed to Gomez. Back to our Craig Council day. Carsoup.com trivia question. Which five teams did Craig play for in a 16 year career? You good with all those? Oh, check out the minor league version of it. Wow, get the minor leagues in there, huh? Ben, Central Valley, New Haven, Colorado Springs. I, were those all with the Rockies, I guess? Those are all with the Rockies, yep. Central Valley's Visalia. Oh, Visalia, okay. So uh, the other two, Lancaster and uh, what was the other one? Tucson? Tucson, those were rehab. Ar Arizona? Yes. Six minor league cities you played for, minor league teams. Five big league clubs. And just think, as you were saying on the bus the other day, that 16-year career was in jeopardy when you got traded here to Los Angeles. You know, you you, you spent what four months here in L.A. Spent four months. And then got went, released. Went to spring training and was released. Yeah. Salvaged it. What a career. Davis grounds to third, and two men are out.
Great picture. Wow, Young. That's a Marlins picture, I think. Two time World Series champ, MVP of the NLCS. Normally, we don't like to uh, shower the praise on our analysts, but you're a guest analyst and it's your last day. Why, why, why would you not shower praise on well, Rock? Well, you know, Rock, he, he's against that. He's against that. He doesn't like to talk about himself. He's very uncomfortable with that. Did you know Rock caught the only no hitter in Brewers franchise history? I did. He it's told me true. about that. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Reynolds pulls one foul. Did you win anything for the uh, the NL or the uh, championship series MVP? What'd you win for that? Uh, I they give you a trophy. It looks like you could have gone and got it at Don's trophy shop. To be you honest with you, didn't win a car you? or anything or no. big fat check, nothing like that. No. That's sad because times have changed now. Yeah. I feel like you got hosed on that one. I think they need to make that right. Just like Laz Diaz needs to apologize. Everybody talks about Craig's uh, winning run, the World Series winning run in 97. But uh, what goes under the radar is you had one of the great at bats, the sacrifice fly, right? That. That forced extra innings against the Indians. That's the reason you were even in extra innings in the first place. Yeah, that that would, that's the at bat that makes your teeth chatter. It's the it's the <laughs> bottom of the ninth inning. It's you're down a run, first and third, double play, you lose the game, one out. So it's it's the at bat that uh, you know it's all on the line right there. There's yeah. there's success, there's failure. It's you know and there's a big spectrum of the result what the what's going to happen with the result. But it's the at bat you dream of as a kid. Yeah. Reynolds fouls another one back and, I, and I'm bringing all this up because I like showering praise on you but also there's probably a good teaching moment in there and I've heard you talk to guys uh, in the past you were very young in your big league career. And there is something to be said for how to prepare for a moment like that try to calm yourself down and you know, be able to try to make things as normal as can as you can as Reynolds grounds to third base. So we'll have Craig teach us something when we come back. He's very calm right now I can tell you. He's hardly uptight. Seven to nothing, and the Brewers Community Foundation will again present Drive for Charity on August 22nd through the 24th during the Pittsburgh series at Miller Park. Fans are asked to bring school supplies for children in need. Let's get our kids off to a good start, and uh, thank you to the fans for contributing to that cause. And 
The Brewers this week have seen two of the most buzzed about young players in the league, Javier Baez for the Cubs and Yasiel Puig here for the Dodgers. And Ron Renneke said that certainly what stands out with those two is they're just their tremendous talent that the, for their talent at their, their age. And to be at this stage right now, he said if they continue to develop, it is scary that they'll not just be all-stars, but better than that. He said you just don't see this kind of physical talent at this age. Yeah, that's a good point, Sophia. The Brewers have run up against some very talented, much talked about prospects. And uh, certainly Baez is making a name for himself quickly in the big leagues. He's going to strike out a lot. He's going to hit a lot of home runs. Puig is in another stratosphere right now. All-star starter. I mean, he's recognized. He and Mike Trout recognized as two of the most popular players in the game. You can just get a sense of that walking around Los Angeles and walking around Dodger Stadium. There are Puig jerseys everywhere. No ground ball over to Overbay. Peralta's there to cover it. Free us, the pitcher is retired. So one away. Yeah, the game's uh, enjoying some very bright young stars. And I think back to your point, Craig, about Chris Davis and Scooter Jeanette. I mean, I don't think even Luke Croy and Segura. I mean, these are guys that really didn't come with much fanfare through the minor leagues. Carlos Gomez, it's been a long time coming for him, but got a collection of players that are I think in that underdog role other than Ryan Braun and the news around Ryan Braun all these years Brewers are kind of under the radar as a ball club I think they like it that way but I think they match talent with anybody in the National League right now well I think you're right I think I'd add Willie Peralta to that list and Jimmy Nelson to that list I mean these are these are core contributors to the team produced from the minor league system not you know of the uh, the hype that the Javier Baez is of the world are but they've uh, become s solid and really you know we looked at some of the numbers with Willie Peralta today plus major league contributors. D Gordon takes a strike. And they're young players mm -hmm. you know 20 Willie's 25 years old still just. Jimmy Nelson 25 years of age. Gordon slaps one foul. Got to be so careful when you're talking about prospects. And, and you know, the Cubs right now, that's what they have to go on. That's what they're doing. They're rebuilding. So, of course, their prospects are in the news. And, and they have great prospects. But it's still so hard to quantify how good an organization is. And it doesn't necessarily translate all the time. As Gordon flies out. Again, well positioned out in left field. D. Gordon's a great example. I mean, he came to the big leagues with a lot of fanfare. They thought he was going to be an all-star for a long time. As a shortstop, he was going to be their franchise shortstop. Just a couple of years later, he was in the minor leagues. He's come back as an all-star this year after a position change. Well, it's interesting. And I think it's, it's a credit to the Dodgers to have some patience. It's, doesn't, it's not always going to happen in that first year you're a big league player. Some guys are going to struggle a little bit, but they've had some patience with him, and now he's he's uh, producing at a, at a very high level. Just getting back to our conversation from last inning, is Yasiel Puig bats? You know, you'd be a perfect guy to explain this, but are you able to scout right now, or able to see in players the ability to slow the world down and and deliver in the big moments, contribute in the big moments? That's got to be one of the toughest things to get a grasp on. There's so many players with great talent, great skills and tools, but how do you really know they can be great players when you need them to be great players? I, I think that's a it's a very difficult thing to evaluate. It's it's hard to know who's going to shine in those big moments, and I, I don't think we always we always know. Um, but I think you if you put together a lot of the ingredients. You, 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 you kind of hope that last ingredient will, will come out when they have those opportunities. I mean, you always had a sense about that with Braun. Kind of felt like Braun was a big game player, up for the big moments. He embraces the big moments. I remember talking to Garth Orge after Scooter Jeanette's first year in the organization. He was just out of high school. So he had just gone into, I believe, the Arizona Instructional League. And Garth Orge, who at that time was the Brewers minor league guy, 
uh, infield guy went around the minor leagues as a coordinator said I'll tell you this little guy is going to hit. He is not scared to hit and I think he's going to be a big league hitter one day and then the next year we saw Scooter Jeanette they invited him to the Brewers on deck event he had just completed his first year maybe a second year and you know he's my size and I'm looking I'm going really <laughs> this is the guy Garth Orge is betting his mortgage on and boy was he right like I'm wondering what he saw in Scooter Jeanette that helped him see that he still really can't define it but he just said that there was just a sense about him mostly that he was able to a hit the fastball couldn't get a fastball by him even though everybody tried it's a good place to start but there's something that you guys are able to recognize in players Yasiel Puig lines one in the left to base hit just past Segura and the Dodgers with a single from Puig here in the fifth base runner with one out as promised earlier in the broadcast, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Don't forget to use the hashtag WISFANPHOTO. Comes from Marie today. Thanks, Marie. Good picture with her significant other, I'm guessing. Could be a brother, I guess. All brought to you by AT&T. Always love the pictures. Gonzalez jam shot that's going to fall a base hit sounded like he broke his bat but able to muscle one into right field and the Dodgers down seven nothing have two on with one out and Matt Kemp coming up we see Scooter Jeanette positioned about six or seven steps out into the outfield to maybe get a ball that's hit like this, but just a little bit hit a little bit too far into the outfield. Dodger fans trying to come to life with some help from their scoreboard. Well, Matt Kemp could put one swing on a ball and change the complexion of the game a little bit. Kemp did homer last night in the ninth inning. Made it a one run Brewer lead at the time. K Rod gave it up and then retired the next three hitters. A lot of talk about Matt Kemp over the last couple of years that he might not be a Dodger much longer. Expecting trades and a big contract yet. Uh, he has really come on. His uh, June was a big one. His July was a, another big one. A couple of weeks ago, he was the player of the week in the National League. Looks like the Matt Kemp of old after coming back from shoulder surgery prior to last season. He's had some ankle problems as well. Peralta's been getting a lot of ground balls today looking for one here to try to get out of this inning and a foul out of play by Kemp. Although Kemp struck out twice today. Really wouldn't mind racking another one up here to win the inning. Let's try to keep the ball out of the air with this guy. Especially in Day games at Dodger Stadium. The ball travels a lot better in the daytime than it does at night. Able to check his swing. Three and one. Remember, Kemp was complaining to the home plate umpire Mike Easterbrook in his last at bat after being rung up on a borderline pitch. Hitters count three and one. And Kemp in the air. Right field. Braun fighting the sun. Fighting the sun and makes the catch for the out. Boy, that had a little drama to it. As Ryan Braun dealing with that high sky. Not a cloud up there today. And another scoreless inning for Willie Peralta.
Wilson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Miller Lite, now in the original can, it's Miller time. Sunday afternoon, Dodger Stadium. Brian Anderson with Craig Council. He's filling in for Bill Schroeder, who will return on Tuesday. Sophia Minnett, our reporter, working on her tan down to the first base dugout, at least right next to it. Sun beating down on Sophia and our technical personnel down there. She's hanging in there, though. No problem. Segura, a little flare right field. That's got a chance to drop. Oh, Gonzalez never looking at the ball. At the last moment, reaches up and makes the catch. Gonzalez was looking at everybody else to make that play. Realized nobody could get there and was in the right place at the right time. Look at this. Well, this is quite a play. He was almost looking to D. Gordon saying, where are you, D? Are you going to make the play? <laughs> Cheering him on. And instead, Gonzalez makes a play. That would have been a hit for Segura. It was in fair territory. Wiping the tears from his eyes. Ryan Braun doing the same. We talk a lot about the high sky in Arizona in spring training. This is one of those today. It's got to be tough to gauge pop-ups and fly balls today. There is nothing up there to get your depth perception. And these are difficult days. Especially for the right, right side of the infield, second base, first base, and right field. A tough sun field on the right side. Braun was really wrestling that sun, but he did make the play. Peralta strikes out. Two up, two down for Frias. Here's Carlos Gomez. He's had another good day today. He's walked twice. He has the only two walks for the Brewers, or actually the first two walks for the Brewers, and then he goes deep. Gomez, our Southwest Airlines non-stoppable play, his 20th home run of the season. Gomez now with 20 homers to go along with 27 stolen bases. He's the only one of the big leagues with those numbers. 20-20. And a swing and a miss. That figures to be a regular spot for Carlos Gomez if he stays healthy at this point in his career. The kind of game he's playing nowadays. And a slider struck him out. So Frias, a minor league starting pitcher, has been able to give the Dodgers three innings. He's allowed just one run, and he's retired nine in a row.
Stadium, the Brewers leading 7 to nothing. and this Friday, August 22nd, is your last chance to get a free Brewers t-shirt this season. The Brewers and the Pirates will battle for playoff position, and all fans will receive a free Brewers t-shirt courtesy of Quick Trip. For tickets, you can call 414-902-4000 or visit Brewers.com today. Now, when the Brewers return, they will see R.A. Dickey and the Toronto Blue Jays, and Ron Renicky during our conversation this morning, shared that he actually almost became a knuckleball pitcher himself, said that when he was done playing and was a coach here with the Dodgers. Uh, he was in his early 30s and started throwing knuckleballs and considered going somewhere to uh, develop that. Actually did it in the instructional league, but then had to make the choice whether to uh, decide to continue with the coaching path or to try to give it a shot and uh, said it was he did well with it, but uh, decided to stay with the coaching path. Yeah, and it's a good thing he did. I'm not sure how long that career would have lasted. He is good friends with Charlie Huff, though, and Charlie Huff, though, encouraged Renicky to do that. Remember that story. That's a good one, Sophia. Thank you. Renicky was uh, a big part of the Dodger family, still very respected here with the Dodgers, those who are still here from that era, the O'Malley era of the Dodgers. Carl Crawford leads off for Los Angeles. Renicky was a very successful minor league manager in the Dodgers system. Had a couple of minor league league championships bouncing ball Segura hustles it over to first to get Crawford for the out and Crawford thinks he's safe kind of like the way Crawford's playing here it's a seven nothing game Sun beating down and he's playing hard well he's hustling down the line and Gene Segura makes a very nice play that's not as easy as a play as Gene Segura is making it look Crawford kind of taking his time, walking back to the dugout, hoping that uh, Mattingly will challenge. So far, that's not going to happen. And Crawford finally jogs in now. He's like, wait, you, are you serious? You're not coming out here? That's a hit. I think Mattingly gave him the thumbs down, though. He got the uh, word from the clubhouse. So one away for Peralta. I talked to Don Mattingly in Milwaukee last week about the challenges and the way he does it. And he's almost, I don't want to say defiance, that's too strong of a word, but he feels like and hopes that the rule is going to change a little bit as Turner flies to Braun to right and two outs. So you remember last week against the Dodgers, Mattingly, he would uh, send catchers out or the first baseman over. He would really stall the game. And I asked him about it Sunday, and he said, well, I do that because I don't want to run all the way out there. I think that looks bad. It's, it's not a good way to do it because I'm just going to stand in the dugout. I'd rather my players do the stalling, and then I don't have to even go out if it's a thumbs down. In his mind, he takes the exact same amount of time as a manager who runs all the way out there, which is what you're supposed to do. And I think that's probably... The way it's going, I, I think the the manager running out, standing next to an umpire, having this friendly surface conversation while the replay uh, staff gets to look at the plays as Darwin Barney singles to right. That seems like it's an unnecessary step. Are you with me, or what, how I'm do you with think? I'm with you 100. And I think if you'd ask all managers, they say the same thing. They don't want to be running on the field in a ceremonial kind of process. Uh, and I think Major League Baseball will, will find a way to tweak that system a little bit. But it, I, you're right. You do see Mattingly asking his players to do the stalling um, for him so he has time to go out. And it's, 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 I think Major League Baseball has stated all along it's going to take a couple of years to perfect the system. And I think that's one of the flaws in it is that we have this kind of strange dance that the, the managers and the umpires do where there's no argument really. Until the final call comes back. But they kind of stand and the manager looks into the dugout looking for a for a thumbs up or a thumbs down from one of his coaches. In Mattingly's words, he's trying to protect the the visual of the game, even though the game is modernizing, replay is brand new. But Mattingly says, look, you know, a manager running out onto the field and not arguing, just kind of standing there, it's weird. It looks strange, it doesn't look good. 
And we don't have to have that step. We don't need that step. Renicky agrees with that, by the way, although Renicky does go out there because that's what these managers are told to do. There's actually uh, measures implemented that Joe Torre and his staff at Major League Baseball, they can find managers for stalling the game. If they feel like a manager, I don't know if the Dodgers have been fined or not. Mattingly wouldn't say, but if you're sending a catcher out or a pitcher or you're asking your first baseman to come over, telling your pitcher not to get on the rubber, you can actually, there's a fine system set up for that. So yeah. that seems like a, an area that's going to change hopefully sooner than later. Maybe have the manager go to the top step. You know, you don't need to send a player over just to alert your pitcher or your batter. There's a little pop up. Jeanette is back and over the shoulder. He makes the catch. Scooter Jeanette with a nice play on Butera to end the inning. And Willie Peralta is rolling along. He's got a five hit shutout through six. Final trip for the Brewers in the regular season here. Jonathan Lucroy's had quite a day today. He's in our Marshfield Clinic shining moment. Lucroy with a two run home run in the first inning and then a three run double with two outs in the second inning. Five RBIs, two swings of the bat. And the Brewers jumped out early on the Dodgers courtesy of their catcher, their all star catcher, Jonathan Lucroy. Got a couple of changes here for Los Angeles. Andre Ethier will play first base. This is something uh, Mattingly has been wanting to try here over the last few weeks to get Ethier at first base. Scott Van Slyke will enter the game in right field. So Kemp and Gonzalez are out. And Ethier is going to get some game reps at first base. Lucroy leads the way. Jonathan's career high for RBIs, if you're wondering, he is seven. And he did that twice in the same season back in 2012. Has had at least five RBIs in a game on four occasions now. Second time he's done it this year. He had a five RBI game back in June in Arizona against the Diamondbacks. His seven RBI games came in May of 2012 and August of 12. Twins and the Cubs. Lucroy, two out of three. 58 runs batted in. He now has 13 home runs. Can find him among league leaders in batting average. The Brewers as a team, fourth in the league in batting average as Lucroy sends one deep left center. Puig 
has a beat on this one for out number one. Greg and I were talking uh, between innings, carrying over that conversation about pace of play and some of the changes with replay as Ryan Braun is introduced here. What are some other thoughts you have, Craig, on how to maybe speed the game up? The game's good in its flow, but there needs to be some of the dead time probably carved off the game. Euchre and I were talking about this last week as well. Well, I think it's, it's one of the concerns with, with the replay is the replay has continued to lengthen the game in these dead spots that, that Mattingly is talking about. Braun bounces to short for the second out. And I think it's it's going to be a, it's a it's a huge issue for the game. I think it's one of the the most important issues that baseball confronts is the, is the pace of game issue. I mean, uh, I, I believe there's only two teams now playing under three hour game averages, and uh, I know the Commissioner Seelig has talked a lot about that. It's an important thing to him, and I think for new Commissioner elect Rob Manford, it's going to be one of the issues that. Uh, he addresses just to I agree with you the game itself is, is fine it's the 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 dead time and maybe the between inning things is the stuff we're going to have to address over Bay bounces to Gordon nice play by the Dodgers second baseman and that'll wrap up the top of the seventh it is stretch time here at Dodger Stadium and we'll turn it over to Dodger Stadium Productions and their presentation of God Bless America performed today by Anthony Evans. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen would you please, please rise for the singing of God Bless America performed today by Anthony Evans. God Bless America. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, wide with foam. God bless America. My God bless America, my home sweet home. Anthony Evans.
stretch time here at Dodger Stadium. The Brewers lead it 7 to nothing over the Dodgers going for the sweep. And in our Miller Lite Tavern of the Game, tonight's Tavern of the Game winner is Ducks Bar in Crandon. If the Tavern contact calls the Milwaukee Brewers in the next 24 hours at 414-902-4572, then Ducks Bar will receive 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a 2014 Milwaukee Brewers home game. This offer is courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. And it's a good day for a cold one here uh, at Dodger Stadium today, B.A. So, Sophia, I'm, I'm thinking you're not w willing to give up the tavern of the game. That's kind of Rock's thing, but you've really made it your own here the last few days. No, 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 no. I'm just pinch hitting for Rock with the tavern of the game. This is this is his baby. So when he comes back on Tuesday, I'll give it right back to him. I don't know. I don't know. I heard from the tavern folks. They kind of like you doing it. We'll see. All right, here we go to the Dodger seventh inning. Willie Peralta is out. Zach Duke is in. And first ball swinging is Rojas, and he bounces out for the first out of the inning. So good day today. Counts to uh, allow Willie Peralta to get an early exit. He Second pitched well, eight. six shutout innings. And he's in line for the win, which would be his 15th. The Brewers again scoring a lot of runs for Willie Peralta. Well, another starter doing a great job. It's at least six innings in 10 of the last 11 games for Peralta. And he or for Brewer starters and Peralta retired the leadoff hitter in every inning and that's just a great that's a great recipe for success retiring the leadoff hitter Dodgers uh, swinging away early after the Brewers got some big offensive support the first couple of innings the Brewers scored in each of the first four innings it's been seven nothing since Gomez his home run to lead off the fourth and now you're in a position where Zach Duke <laughs> he needs work believe it or not he's been worked a lot but with a day off tomorrow opportunity for Renicky to try to get some guys on the mound you don't want relievers to sit too long it's that fine line that balance between getting rest and sitting too much and that's a it's a good problem for Renicky he'll take that problem any day trying to find innings for his relievers I think after today, Brewer starters have thrown 780 innings, which is third most in Major League Baseball. And I think kind of the golden standard, I think, starting pitchers as a staff shoot for 1,000 innings, which is like 200 from all five spots. And the Brewers are on pace to get there. They're wow. on pace for 1,011 innings from their starters. So it's that is not easy to do. Yeah, that's a good point. You put it in that perspective. Your five starters. Kind of the benchmark is 200 innings, 30 starts a year, 32, 33 starts a season. Yeah, that's a good note right there. So on a pace for a little over a thousand innings, you're saying? From your from their starting pitching, and that wow. uh, that's substantial. Only the Reds and the Braves with more innings pitched from their starting rotation than the Brewers starting play today. Good nugget. Pitching coach Rick Kranitz. That is one of his motivational tools. We need you out there every fifth day. We need innings. And those who are filling in, there's a bouncing ball to third base. How about that play by Reynolds? Man, on a tough hop with a speedy base runner. Any bobble at all, and Gordon's going to be safe. Instead, two outs. Well, here's a great example of how your feet can make a play for you. He reacted immediately to that ball, charged it hard, got a little bit easier hop to make the play. And that's just a great reaction. Mark's not over there at third base that much anymore, but that was an excellent reaction. And his feet allowed him to make a very difficult play look rather easy. Yeah. He's been impressive defensively this year, Mark Reynolds. Never known as a, a great defender. Two outs. Here's Puig. Shows bunt. Takes a strike from Duke. They're talking about the thousand innings number. In case you're wondering, the last Brewers starting rotation to uh, reach a thousand or more innings. You got to go all the way back to 1993. That's the Cal Eldred 
Jamie Navarro, Ricky Bonus, Bob Wegman era. There were others, but those were the the four that logged the most innings. 1993, the last time a Brewers pitching staff, a starting pitching staff, logged a thousand innings. So what Craig's talking about here is very unusual and very important if you're going to have the kind of season you want. And I think it's what Doug Melvin hoped for when he put these veteran starters together. Low throw dug out by Overbay. Puig is out, and Zach Duke with a three up, three down, seventh inning. Shutout intact. All Brewers today in Southern California. Away from a three game sweep and their fourth consecutive win. It'll keep them three up on the St. Louis Cardinals who won earlier today. Cardinals beat the Padres, took three out of four from them. Rojas will stay in to play second after his pinch hit appearance. And JP Howell will be on the mound for Los Angeles. This was the left hander that a lot of Dodgers fans were looking for on Friday night. Mattingly didn't go with how how was actually set to close that game believe it or not never got to him and here he is in a lopsided affair on Sunday our farmland what's cooking scooter Jeanette how about his month of August 367 hitter he's got eight RBIs three doubles today Jeanette is one for three Jeanette Davis and Reynolds will bat here in the eighth. First ball swinging. And one away. Now the Dodger bullpen has not allowed a base runner since Gomez is home run. Fielder, number 18, 13 Chris straight Davis. retired. But the nature of the game is a great deal responsible for that. A lot of first pitch swinging. Chris Davis at the plate presented by Wendy's. Drove in a run with a double. Did Davis back in the actually. That was a double that made it second and third. I beg your pardon. Two for three. No RBI today. Had an RBI double as part of a five run. Inning for the Brewers on Friday night that tied the game. to Darwin Barney low throw Andre Ethier digs one out so Barney makes the play there's Marco Estrada see him in the 
Dodger eighth inning. Might uh, might see Estrada try to finish this game today. We'll see. On the day off tomorrow. By the way, Andre Ethier playing just his second career game at first base. Has not played there since 2010. Played one inning of first base back in 2010. Mattingly would uh, like to have an option at first base outside of Adrian Gonzalez. And this is the type of game where you get a player some experience. So the next time you have to, if you have to throw him out there and whether it be a start or a closer game, he feels a little bit more comfortable. Reynolds takes a strike. I believe Ethier played a little first base at Arizona State. When the Dodgers were in Milwaukee last week, Ethier was taking ground balls at first base. So it's not just on a whim that Mattingly puts him out there. There's a plan in place, and he's been taking ground balls and throws to second, doing all the, the cutoff and relay work to figure out where to stand, where to be. But it's it's a it's quite a bit different when you when you throw it. Ground balls and batting practice, and then during the game is quite a bit different. So, Andre is probably the only player with a little anxiety going on right now. <laughs> That's right. Did you ever play first base? I did. Two games at first base, and it was nerve wracking. Yeah. I did in college. I hated it. I hated it. I mean, I felt so awkward at first base. I think uh, my, my philosophy was stay as close to the base as you can. All <laughs> right. Ethier is venturing much further than I would have been willing to do. Yeah, he kind of gives you an idea. He's comfortable over there yeah. just by where he's playing. But you got to know that's a dead sprint to get to first base if the ball's hit on the ground. And there's that little paranoia when you're running to the bag. You know a throw's coming your way any moment. <laughs> and you're trying to get there, get your feet. In the right place. Uh, one of those lazy Sundays here at Dodger Stadium, and the Brewers have made it so. Jumping on Dan Heron early. Brewers had two on the board before there was an out today. As Reynolds strikes out, three up, three down. For J.P. Howell. Dodgers coming up, bottom of the eighth. Seven, nothing, Milwaukee. Here at Dodger Stadium in the eighth and Saturday, August 23rd, the Brewers will square off against the division rival Pittsburgh Pirates, and the first 20,000 fans, 21 and older, will receive a free Brewers umbrella courtesy of Potawatomi Hotel Casino. For tickets, you can call 414-902-4000 or visit Brewers.com today. And a few adjustments here for Ron Renicki, including Marco Estrada taking over for Zach Duke. 
Starting to feel like a spring training game here at Dodger Stadium in August. Elian Herrera will take over in right. That gets Braun out of the game. And Gerardo Parra will come into play center field. Carlos Gomez's day is done. And as Sofia mentioned, Marco Estrada. And Marco had one of the more important outings of this road trip when he went four innings against the Chicago Cubs. Despite a loss in that game, helped the Brewers reset their bullpen. So Estrada gets the eighth. You wonder if he might try to finish this game. We'll see. Again, the Brewers have a day off tomorrow. Curious to see if uh, Renicky feels like he needs to get anybody else some work, like a Brandon Kinsler or Tom Gorzolani. Andre Ethier will lead off. Now the Giants are ahead of the Phillies in San Francisco today in the eighth inning. That's a 3 2 Giants lead. With a Giants win and a Dodgers loss, that would shrink the Dodger lead in the National League West to three and a half games. It's so funny, too, because before the series began, Don Mattingly actually got a question from one of the uh, media members covering the Dodgers. I assume he's covering the Dodgers. He wasn't one of the Brewers guys, but saying, D do you feel like this division is over <laughs> at this point? I thought Mattingly was going to. I was surprised he even answered the question. He just kind of said, uh, no, not, not really. Well, we play 162 games in a, in a baseball season, but invariably in almost all division races will go down to the last week. You, 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 will, you will play games up until the last week that really matter, even for the division, you know, the division champions. They're, it's very hard to run away with these divisions. And the, the records and the, the parity in baseball now, I think, uh, shows you that. Uh, easy come, easy go. The Brewers know that. Brewers let a six and a half game lead get away in about two weeks earlier this year. Well, we're also keeping an eye on the Washington Pittsburgh game. Pirates lead 2 0 over the Nationals. That game's in the sixth inning. Ethier drives one to right. That ball is well hit. And Herrera has to play off the base of the wall. Strong throw into second base. Ethier is just in there with a double. He's still a fan favorite here in L.A., Andre Ethier. Basically a backup player, a role player now. Well, he whistles one over the head of Herrera for a double. And he gets a fastball in the middle of the plate. And Puts a good swing out. Elian Herrera with a nice play to make this close. From shortstop to right field. He can do it all. Super utility man. Now here's Van Slyke, first at bat. Tough to know who to root for in that Pittsburgh Washington game. Normally, I would, I would be looking at the Pirates, and you're, you know, you're, if you're in the Brewers camp, you're thinking, all right, we need the Pirates to lose again. But based on your motivational speech at the open of our broadcast, <laughs> if we're starting looking at, to look ahead now, the Brewers could leave Los Angeles tonight with the best record in the National League if the Nationals lose. So are we looking behind or are we looking ahead? Well, I, I like looking ahead, and I think that's a great spot to be in and sit in the top, you know, with the best record in the National League. It's a, you know, it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean anything at this point, but it's a it's a good little nugget going home from, from a long road trip and, and saying we earned that. Fly ball, deep center field. Parra going back, and he can't get there. That's off the wall. And Slight wipes out the Brewers' shutout. A run is in. Ethier scores. Back-to-back -back doubles by the Dodgers. And it's 7-1 to one, Milwaukee. First two batters have reached on Estrada. Another fastball that... The big, strong Van Slyke sends Paul all the way to the wall. It's amazing how 
much better the ball carries during day games compared to night games. That's an easy out last night. But a little bit of breeze blowing out. It's warm today. So the Dodgers on the board. L.A. native Marco Estrada. Grew up coming to games here at Dodger Stadium. Facing Carl Crawford. Marco tells a great story about his his mom. They were uh, in Mexico. Marco was born in Mexico. And his mother, I believe it was her sister, lived in Los Angeles. So saw an opportunity for her and her son to come to the United States. And ended up here in Los Angeles. Marco speaks very fondly of his mother. She uh, worked as a housekeeper and actually is still active. She still is in that role and uh, just did everything she could to make sure Marco could grow up in the United States, made sure that he he learned English at a very young age. Fly ball to left Crawford out to Davis for the first out. Talk about the sacrifices parents make for their children. It's got to be something for Marco's mother to see him pitching at Dodger Stadium. I'm sure it's a great thrill for her, and she should be very proud. And it sounds like you hear so many stories like this where a, where a mom or a dad's great work ethic a lot of times was is the inspiration, and, and it shows up in a guy like Marco. His, his mom's worth that work ethic really shows up in Marco. Yeah, he said she would uh, she'd work 12 15 hour days. He would go with her a lot and kind of help her as he could and then you know as he started getting old enough to play baseball he was uh, played a little bit of soccer but always a baseball player. Loved the game, loved the Dodgers. He's been here before, pitched here before but Always special for him, he says. Turner, a slow roller out to third. Reynolds on the run. Makes a nice play for out number two. Especially in a game like this when it's so connected to fathers and sons. Not that daughters, you know, mothers and sons. It's certainly a part of the game, but there's something unique about fathers and sons. Marco never knew his dad, and his mom was the one that instilled that love of the game for him. He's had an, a pretty amazing career when you think about it. And his, his was a career that almost ended a couple of times. He was on that release block, taken off a major league roster, even with the Brewers. The 2011 season, Marco Estrada came over to pitch for Zach Greinke in a spring training game because you guys didn't have anybody else. Brewers were kind of out of options at that point. And Marco came over, dominated, dominated again. And they gave him a locker. Kept dominating. Yeah, they finally gave him a real locker. That's right, 2011. And then he made the ball club after being taken off the roster. And well, he was a valuable member of that club in 2011. Ron Renick, he still says he was one of the most important pieces on that 11 club. Well, it was it's valuable innings and it's kind of it's uh, maybe innings that go unnoticed sometimes but there some 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 members of the staff make do their job and make other people good at their job and I think you mentioned uh, the start with Kyle Loesch where Mark go through four innings and that those four innings you know didn't win us the game but they did make a difference in how the bullpen felt and how those guys were going to be able to be used in the following games and in this series. Well, the Brewers had their fair share of stars back in 11. But Marco, you and Katze kind of handling that clubhouse. And that's, a, that's a big, a big deal as Herrera battling the sun loses it. Boy, you can see that coming. Elion. Never saw the ball, and that's going to end up as a sun double for Darwin Barney, and the run is in. 
second run in. That's a tough break for Estrada. Should have been out of the inning, but Herrera, unfamiliar with the outfield. He's been out there a little bit. But this one ate him alive. He never saw the ball. Right. You know, you can just see how difficult it is. He's got the dark sunglasses on, but it shows you what Ryan Braun was. A, what's a, it's a tough play, and Ryan Braun was able to make that play, but Elliott not out there as much in right field. And Here's Drew Butera with two away. Good curveball for a strike. Seven to two. Brewers had seven runs on the board. In the fourth inning, Gomez hit Homer. Brewers have not had a hit nor a base runner since Gomez Homer. Fifteen in a row, the Dodgers have retired. And Marco Estrada picks up a strikeout to end the inning. So that'll do it for the Dodgers in the eighth. They get two, though. And it's 7 2 crew. We go to the ninth. <laughs> Might be good. I love working with Craig Deshaun. We'll see Craig on Tuesday. All the home crew back together again. Rock will be back. Craig Council filling in for us. You've done a great job, man. We appreciate you uh, stepping in for Bill Schroeder. Three games. We didn't wear you out too much, did we? Oh, I've enjoyed it. It'd be fun having Rock back. I guess really the question is did we do enough that you would consider not coming back or if there was another opportunity would you come back. Have we insulted you enough that you would you're you're not going to do it again because that's our goal is try to avoid that. <laughs> you're not answering anything for rock. I'll okay. fill it for rock anytime rock calls. I'm here. I think a great broadcast would be you and rock. Maybe you guys can uh, do the Blue Jays series. Just two ball players having a chat. You don't need a play by play announcer. You just, you guys just sit there and you just, just having a chat. Sit on your bar stool. Maybe put you down there in the dugout. I think that'd be a great telecast. I'd enjoy that from my living room. 
New pitcher is Pedro Baez, by the way. He takes over for the Dodgers here in the ninth. Gene Segura leads off. Yeah, thanks to Craig, our thanks to Bob Euchre and Davey Nelson all uh, filling in. Filling up the chair next door with uh, the absence of Bill Schroeder. I talked to Rock yesterday, and he's doing great. That uh, infection on the finger, which can be very scary, and it was the right thing to um, have him go to the hospital immediately in Chicago. That was getting very serious. Could have turned into a an extremely serious situation with the infection, staph infection, and uh, the doctors did the right thing, and Rock got off his tough guy stance and uh, allowed them to to uh, direct his next steps and it was uh, really important to be able to go home and get some rest while his body was fighting that infection and Segura grounds out so he'll be back Tuesday he said he's feeling great wants to thank everybody for all the well wishes and all of the uh, the good words Rock will be back for this Blue Jays series our Miller like what's on tap you got R.A. Dickey and Mike Fires, the knuckleballer Dickey. And Fires, who's going after his third win in a row, two great starts, and a 14 strikeout game against the Cubs. Jay Happ and Jimmy Nelson. Happ is a left hander. That's a day game on Wednesday. And we'll be televising both. A couple of notes on the Blue Jays Edwin Encarnacion and Adam Lind as Para lines one to right. On the first pitch, Gerardo Parra in his first at bat with a double. That breaks up the run of 16 consecutive outs for Dodger pitching. Three, double for Parra. And a runner at second here in the ninth with one out. So Encarnacion and Lind are back for the Blue Jays. They both did big damage against the Brewers last month in Toronto. Both were uh, had lengthy absences with injuries. Encarnacion returned Friday. He had a home run today for Toronto. Right now, the Blue Jays are four back in the second American League wild card race, seven and a half back of the Orioles in their division. So. That Toronto club is quite an offensive team, and Encarnacion and Lind are two middle of the order bats, getting them back really changes how that lineup looks and that's a dangerous lineup that's a lineup a little similar to Milwaukee full of yeah. power yeah they lead baseball in homers Brett Laurie is on the DL if you're wondering the former Brewer farmhand I think he was back one day and went right back on the disabled list he's had a tough time staying on the field in Toronto so that's the Blue Jays Coming in Tuesday. Wonder who we've got lined up to sing the Canadian anthem. Got the double anthem, you know, with the Blue Jays in town. That's right. It's a big. That's a big move for Alita Mercer. Got to get that Canadian anthem lined up, especially with the representation in the front office that we have: Doug Melvin and Gord Ash, part of the Canadian Brotherhood. Gord Ash has been filling in on the radio for Bob Euchre. Actually, I guess technically he's filling in for Craig Council. Because you were supposed to fill in for Bob Euchre on the radio. Then we're moved to TV, so Gord's filling in for you. There he is. Maybe Gord's responsible for finding that singer. Maybe Alita put Gord yeah. Ash on the job. I wouldn't doubt. He does a lot. You know, he's uh, yeah. he has his hands in a lot of departments. And it wouldn't surprise me. First at bat for Herrera. Carlos Gomez, who Herrera came in for the batting order. Gomez finished one for two, two walks, a home run, three runs scored. Enters into the 2020 club. Gomez hit his 20th home run today. 27 stolen bases. And Herrera, a cut and a miss, three and two now. 
Cardinals won today. They beat the Padres 7 6. Adam Wainwright, his 15th win. Cardinals almost let it get away. The Padres had the go ahead run on base in the ninth inning. Seth Manus actually saved it. And with three more defensive outs, Willie Peralta will join Adam Wainwright and Johnny Cueto as the top winners in the National League, all from the Central Division. Let's see Jonathan Lucroy on deck. If he add to that big RBI day today. Yeah, if he comes up with some men on, he could set a career high, which is seven. He's got five today. And Herrera hanging tough. Pirates were up 2 nothing. Washington just scored. So it's Pittsburgh 2 to 1 as they go to the 7th in D.C. Nationals beat the Pirates on a walk off yesterday. Wilson Ramos had a ground rule double and a walk off hit for the Nationals. They lead their division. Looking like a runaway train right now after the Atlanta Braves fell off the face of the earth for a while. Herrera strikes out. So the second out, Baez picks up his first K. And here comes Lucroy. A home run away from matching a career best seven runs batted in. Which he has done on two occasions. There's still plenty of time in the season for kind of some dramatic shifts in the divisions. And we've seen a team like Atlanta, who's really struggled the past month or so, and a team like Kansas City, who's just skyrocketed all of a sudden and taken the division lead. Yeah, the Royals a half game ahead of the Tigers. And Kansas City won again today. Detroit lost. So a game and a half up on Detroit. Ned Yost Club. Lucroy fouls it away. Well, counts. This was the big moment in the game today. Right out of the gates. Dan Heron on the mound before there was an out. Jonathan Lucroy, a home run. Two run shot. Reynolds handing him his catcher's gear. No the, high fives for the homer. Get the equipment on. No, the, ca the catcher does everything, man. He's got a. <laughs> Blocked the Willie Peralta slider. He's got to hit home runs. He's got to carry his own gear back to the dugout. Now that Lucroy drove in three runs with a double his next at bat. In the air to right. Pretty well hit. And it's going to be caught by Van Slyke. So that'll do it. The inning is over. Lucroy will finish two for five. Five ribbies. Last call for the Dodgers. Brewers trying to make it a sweep.
Brewers getting a big day from Jonathan Lucroy. We showed you the home run. And then Lucroy came back with a double with two outs and three runs batted in in his second at bat. Five nothing for the Brewers in the second inning. Gomez went deep in the fourth inning. That made it seven to nothing. And an offensive barrage. The best of the road trip thus far and a good way to finish up this road trip. Brewers have seven runs on seven hits. And we were wondering who it might be in the ninth and Jeremy Jeffers is the pitcher that Renicky would like to see get some work here a stellar ERA in his 11 big league games this year. Well Jeremy's done a outstanding job coming up from Triple A Nashville originally with the Toronto Blue Jays this year made their big league roster out of spring training. A couple rough outings was released. Brewers were able to convince him to go to Nashville for a couple months, and he's been a very pleasant find for sure. He's been an important find and provided another option for Ron Renicki, a right-handed option, and has pitched some some uh, high leverage innings late in games for Ron. See Elian Herrera, he's uh, gone to center field now. Gerardo <laughs> Parra goes to right. I think Elian Herrera's had enough of right field for now. He did his one inning of of penalty tough Sunfield para much more accomplished out there. All right so Jeffress will try to finish it off. By the way I got a, a text message from Doug Melvin. He says you it's, I don't know if this is a true story or not but you and Gord Ash have both asked for vacation time this week. Is that accurate tough duty up here. I mean really I mean we're into the like the throes of the the waiver trade deadline period. I don't think it's appropriate for you to be asking for vacation at this point. He's spilling company secrets. <laughs> Miguel Rojas leads off for Los Angeles. Well, you deserve a break. I mean, three days on television, you must be exhausted. It's exhausting. Now you're carrying you're carrying all the heavy load, so I, I appreciate it. Get me through it. <laughs> Well, you're undefeated right now. Are you keeping your record when you've done radio this year? You've done a lot of radio this season. Is that something you're, uh, I mean, you're kind of a metrics guy. Are you going that deep into the metrics? Correct counsel when he's on the air? It's got to be a pretty good record. I've, I haven't done that many games. I've only done four games. It was the Arizona series, which was three and one. Good series. And got a chance to go six and one. Hopefully we can finish this off. Wow. That's the CCB index if you're wondering if you're going into the I think it's on baseball reference you got to go you got to click over into that extra set of uh, metrics there, the CCB index as Jeffress strikes out Rojas. That slider from Jeremy Jeffress Jeffress was such a good fastball and if he can just Get that slider in the strike zone once in a while and give that hitter a different look. He's going to be very effective. Carlos Trienfell at the plate just called up yesterday. We'll put a rebay on the DL. He gets an at bat. And one of those games everybody plays today, feels like. 7 0 early. The Brewers. Two outs away from making it a sweep and their fourth straight win. This would be an impressive series for Milwaukee, to say the least, with two more outs. And they would have won all three games in this series in every which way. Coming from behind, one of the best games of the year on Friday. They were down 2 nothing late. Scored five runs in the eighth inning to win that game as Jeffress snares it. Underhand flip to first, second out of the inning. And the Dodgers down to their last out. Well, go back, go back eight, eight or nine days. And the Brewers going into two series with the Dodgers. Six games, two starts apiece from Greinke and Kershaw. The Brewers have an opportunity to say we won five out of those six games. And I think the... That's pretty good. That's playing good baseball. You got to play good baseball to, to win five of those six games. 
Now the Brewers started this trek looking at the Giants, the Dodgers. At the time, the Giants were right there. They're within striking distance, just a couple of games out of first place when that series occurred at Miller Park. So you're looking at the Giants, the Dodgers, and then go on the road to play the Cubs and the Dodgers. And in that window of games, the Brewers, with one more out, have a chance to go nine and four in that stretch and pick up two games in the standings. Doesn't get any easier when the Brewers return home, though. They've got the Blue Jays in contention and then the Pirates. As Puig swings and misses. Oh, and two the count. Comeback win Friday. Beat the best pitcher in the game, Kershaw, yesterday with an aggressive attack. And then just jumping on Dan Heron. And an offensive outburst early. Frankie Rodriguez saved three on this road trip. He's the league leader in saves, and he is 11th by himself all time. He caught and passed Raleigh Fingers on this road trip. Be a lot to summarize for Jeff Grayson, Jerry Augustine, and our Brewers Live postgame. That's coming up momentarily, we hope. And there it is. Puig strikes out, and the Brewers cap off a sweep of the Dodgers. The Dodgers swept for the first time all year as the Brewers win three in a row and now make it four consecutive victories. And they will remain three games up in the National League Central. What a performance. Willie Peralta to the top of the National League wins list. He now has 15 victories. And six shutout innings here today for Peralta. Now that's a road trip. The Brewers go five and two. And that sets us up for Brewers Live. Sophia will have interviews in a moment. We turn it over to Jeff Grayson in our Fox Sports Wisconsin studio. Jeff. Nice win.